Hello and welcome to another session on data warehousing interview questions and answers. As you already know, in this series, we are covering five interview questions on data warehousing with their answers each weekday of this week. Now, today's topic is an interesting one. It is a slowly changing dimensions in a data warehouse. So let's begin the questions for today. The first question is, what is a slowly changing dimension type one? So you might already be aware that a slowly changing dimension is mostly of three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3, and we're going to discuss them in a while. But for those who do not know, a slowly changing dimension types are basically the way you store the updated records in a dimension table. So let's begin with the very first question and the answer to it. Slowly changing dimension type 1. So this is the example that we need to consider to understand that what is a type 1 slowly changing dimension. So we, let's say we have a product dimension. Now in the product dimension, we have a product key, we have the product SKU, we have some product description and the department name. So you can see in the example here that the product description is IntelliKids and the department name is Education. Now what if we update the education, the department name from education to strategy. What do we need to do? How do we store this record in our dimension table? In a type 1 dimension table, we usually go to the same record, to the original record that was there in the product dimension table and update the same record with the new values. So this is your type 1 slowly changing dimension, updating the same record or overwriting. This is your type 1 slowly changing dimension. So you can see obviously there is no history being maintained over here. So you would not know what was the previous name for this department for this product description. You would not know that. So this is the way the records are updated in a type 1 slowly changing dimension. Okay, next question. What is a slowly changing dimension type 2? Now what if I actually want to be able to see the historical records related to this product description as well? What do I need to do? Then we need to go for the type 2 slowly changing dimension. Now as you can see in this original row in product dimension example, you can see you have the same data. You have the product description as IntelliKids, department name as Education. Then you go and update. You want to update that record. So what you do basically is insert another record so you can see down below over here that there is another record with the same SKU same product description but the new department name so now your new department name is strategy now what are the different fields that are added to this kind of a dimension table there's something called a row effective date there's something called a row expiration date and there's something called a current row indicator so in the original row that you had in the product dimension you can see that the row effective date is a date on which the row was inserted. The row expiration date is some maximum value date, which is far into the future. So it is 31, 12, 99, 9. So it's far into future. That means this record is valid till this date, which is like very far away in the future. But once you update this particular value with the new value, you, you update the department name with the new value, then you end it the original record. So now this original record has been ended as 31st of January 2013. And then you insert the new record with the next date as 1st of Feb of 2013 and your expiration date becomes the date in the future. So now this is going to be your active record. So if you want to see that which is my latest record, you can filter by the row expiration date and you would know that this is your latest record. But if you want to see when was that value changed, you can see, you can check it from the row effective date or the row expiration date of the previous record. So between this date, 1st of January 2012 till the 31st of January 2013, the department name was education. After that, it was updated to strategy. So you can identify all that historical changes that happened to this record using these two particular columns. Now you can also see there is another column called the current row indicator over here which says current. So any record which is current you can put the value as current. Any record which is in the history now you can put the value as expired. So this is your expired record and this is your current record. So you can, if you just want to check the latest value, you can also filter by this particular column called the current row indicator as current and you would get this record. Okay, let's move on to the next question. What is a slowly changing dimension type 3? Now a type 3 is a kind of complex 
solution to this whole issue so you can see that the original row and product dimension we had the department name as education now how the updated row would look like if you design it as a type 3 dimension is basically you add another column to this particular table and that would say prior department name that was education your department name was strategy now there are a series of things which are missing over here you do not know when the exact change happened and if you want to know that then you need to add more columns for that if let's say the department name changes again from strategy to something else how would you know you would need to know another column here that prior to department prior to strategy as department name what was your name so you would need to for any change that you make in this particular record you need to keep on adding additional columns so this is not a good approach because you every time you need to add columns which is not possible in a practical data warehouse because you actually need to go to the table and make table structure changes every time so it's not a practical solution okay moving on to the next question what is a surrogate key now let's go back to our idea of a type 2 dimension when we inserted the new record with the new value then now in this case we can see that there are two records over here so to maintain the two records the sku is the same you can see which is basically your business key that denotes that particular product so your sku remains the same but we have something called the product key over here that has changed its value so this product key column over here is your surrogate key and why do we need this because every table that you create in a database would have some primary keys to maintain its integrity so it needs to have the primary key to identify unique data to make sure that the data in the table is unique and not duplicated and written then so every table has a primary key now when you want to uh, maintain a type 2 dimension you know that you would be inserting the data with the same key again now this is not possible in your uh, database table if you make that business key as your primary key so you need to insert another key in your table so that you can maintain that historical record and you need to insert any kind of numerical key or auto incremented key and make that particular column as your primary key so your business key should not be your primary key your auto incremented id key should be your primary key so this is what is called your surrogate key so the product key column over here is your surrogate key column okay so now the next and the last question what is the grain of a data warehouse so so far we have seen so many concepts of data warehouse data mart slowly changing dimensions and so on but what is the grain of a data warehouse what does this term mean so grain of a data warehouse is the lowest level of information or the transactional data that you store in a data warehouse so that usually ends up in a fact table in a data warehouse it is also called the atomicity of the data so for example you are storing the data order data per product per customer in your fact table in your data warehouse so that becomes the grain of your data you are storing the data for each for a combination of unique order and unique product for a customer so you can sum up on this you can aggregate on this data if you need in your reports but you cannot go a level down of this data in your data warehouse so that is what you choose depending on your reporting requirements at what level do you have most of your reporting requirements or even if you do not currently have those reporting requirements what are your expectations of the future reporting requirement so based on that you need to choose what is the lowest level of data you want to maintain in your data warehouse so it has to be chosen wisely because too uh, low the level of data means too many records in your data warehouse so the volume of data becomes huge and if you choose a higher level of grain of data then what would happen if you want to drill down on that data go to a lower level and see and analyze that data that won't be possible so your data warehouse would be a waste so you have to choose this wisely depending on your reporting requirements your future reporting requirements and what is a the optimum grain of data that needs to be maintained in your data warehouse so these were the five questions for today i hope you liked the video thanks a lot for watching this video please do not forget to subscribe to youtube channel for more such videos and i'll talk to you tomorrow with five more questions thanks and goodbye